and welcome to the North State Breakdown with Benjamin Nguyen. Today, I'd like to investigate trends in hiring and appointments made by the Shasta County Board of Supervisors Board Majority, as well as some of what appears to be punitive behavior that is happening on the board. But first, let's discuss some potential issues with the appointment of Tom Toller as Shasta County's new Registrar of Voters. On July 2, 2024, the Shasta County Board officially appointed Tom Toller, a former prosecutor, as the new ROV. However, this appointment has sparked controversy, not only due to Toller's lack of experience in elections, but also because of the board's failure to follow their own established procedures. According to the board's approved procedure, each supervisor was supposed to fill out a ranking sheet listing their top four candidates after the interviews. These rankings were submitted to the County Executive Officer, David Rickard, who would then announce the top three candidates for the board's consideration. But this didn't happen. Only Supervisor Mary Rickard turned in a ranking sheet. Supervisors Kevin Cry, Chris Kalstrom, and Patrick Jones didn't submit theirs, with Jones not even scoring candidates. Cry partially filled out a sheet and did not specify who the scores were for. This deviation from the established process led to four candidates being considered instead of the stipulated three. Cry, as board chair, moved directly from interviews to board discussion and a vote. This not only bypassed the required procedure, but also opened the door for manipulation. Cry negotiated with Kalstrom and Jones to support his top pick, Toller, whose rankings remain unclear due to the lack of submitted sheets. In a statement made to Shasta Scout, Cry admitted that he may have made a mistake in the process, but he said his intent was clear. And if it wasn't clear to the public, it was certainly clear in his own mind. This undermines the whole idea of an open, transparent appointment process if very important decisions aren't being communicated with the public. The question arises, were there any laws broken during this flawed process? One potential violation could be the Brown Act, California's open meeting law designed to ensure transparency in government. The Brown Act requires that decisions made by public bodies be conducted openly, with adequate notice given to the public. By failing to follow the publicly established procedure for the ROV appointment, the board may have breached the Act's principles of transparency and accountability. One remedy could include civil litigation, where individuals or a group could file a lawsuit alleging violations of due process, the Brown Act, or other relevant laws seeking remedies such as the invalidation of the appointment. Another potential avenue would be a recall process, as Toller would be subject to a recall after 90 days in office. And now, the breakdown. In Shasta County, the board majority, led by Kevin Cry, has appeared to have been manipulating key appointments for political gain. One of the first actions taken by Cry upon entering office was to deny an appointment of the former District 1 Supervisor Joe Comenti to the first five Shasta Commission, a board dedicated to promoting the health and well-being of young children. Cry blocked Comenti's appointment, insinuating that Comenti did not have the children's best interest at heart. I think it's important to have people on that board with a kid that is zero to five. And Joe's grandchildren are five and under. They're like one, two, and three years old. So he is, he is. This isn't about Joe. And I will take offense to your saying that that a grandparent shouldn't be on there and it should be parents with kids. Or I, didn't, I didn't say I've that. Got, in a roundabout way, you did. And I've got kid, grandkids that are three of them in that category. Prior to Toller's appointment to the Registrar of Voters position, he was chosen as a replacement for Jeffrey Gorder on the Law Library Board of Trustees, a move perceived as punitive against Gorder for his vocal criticism of Cry. Supervisor Cry, if you are recalled, it won't be because Gavin Newsom unleashed his political machine because he was upset that you canceled the Dominion voting system contract. It won't be because PG&E stepped in because uh, they feared that you're going to expose cover-ups and prevent electricity rate hikes. It won't be because local political elites had it in for you from the day you were elected. It will simply be because you betrayed the trust of District 1 voters by pursuing an extreme ideological agenda which has resulted in chaos and waste from your first month in office. And now that position on the Public Law Library Board has been filled by Sean Northam, a criminal defense attorney who has ties to media outlet Mountaintop Media, known for its far-right views and political activism in Shasta County. At a recent Board of Supervisors meeting, Supervisor Jones mentioned his plans to hire Northam to defend a gun range lawsuit. 
Northam gained notoriety for his vocal opposition to District Attorney Stephanie Bridget during the 2022 primary election cycle. Concerns have also been raised about Northam's character, with a letter a constituent sent to the board about allegations that Northam suggested this individual's political beliefs were unwelcome in their job and implied threats about their job security, boasting of Northam's influence within the probation department. These claims suggest that Northam might use his position to intimidate and silence those with differing views. Combined with his controversial affiliations and outspoken political stances, these allegations cast significant doubt on his suitability for a position of trust and leadership on the Board of Trustees. Now, these appointments suggest a strategic effort to position loyalists in key positions, consolidating the Board's majority's influence over county administration. Joseph Larmore's recent hiring as Shasta County's new county council is yet another controversy, primarily due to Supervisor Kevin Cry's involvement in the process. Cry was accused of cronyism for pushing through Lamore's hire without discussing personal ties. It was revealed that Lamore's girlfriend, Amber Adams, works for Cry. Lamore, previously a county council in Yuba County, received a lucrative compensation package, including a $5,000 car allowance, a $20,000 signing bonus, and an annual salary of $240,000, which many view as highly inflated for his qualifications. Critics, including District 3 Supervisor Mary Rickard, have highlighted Lamore's lack of experience compared to other available candidates within the county's legal community. And I, I wanted to know, have any, did any of you do your dil due diligence and call the references? And did you get any feedback? Uh, certainly you, you did. I did. Yeah, I, I, have, I have great faith in support services and Monica Fugit and her staff. Well, if, if you don't, you, you could bring it up to her. I mean, she, yeah, did, she did the background no, this checks. This has nothing to do with Monica. I have a responsibility to the citizens of Shasta County to call the references, and I did. And I didn't exactly get a resounding positive feedback. So I am quite concerned about this election, and it's nothing personal, but I'm quite concerned. He's only served for three months as a county council in another county. Cry's board majority seemingly prefers appointing personal acquaintances and less qualified candidates to key positions, such as Dr. James Moo as the county's health officer, underscoring a trend of prioritizing loyalty over competence. In fact, Dr. James Moo was not the selection committee's preferred candidate, yet he was ultimately hired for the position. What's important to know is that Dr. Moo had made significant financial donations to the campaigns of supervisors Kevin Cry and Chris Kalstrom, these donations have led to allegations of conflicts of interest, with critics arguing that the financial ties between Dr. Moo and these supervisors influenced the hiring decision. Now, according to SB 1439, local officials are prohibited from voting on matters that have a direct financial interest that have contributed $250 or more to their campaign in the previous year. Additionally, the law blocks local officials from accepting such donations for up to a year after the vote. However, the law, which took effect on January 1, 2023, does not apply to contributions made prior to 2023, even if they were in the last 12 months. Dr. Moo's contributions to Jones and Kellstrom were made in 2022, thereby falling outside the scope of SB 1439. The FPPC confirmed this interpretation, stating that contributions made in 2022 will not count under the new requirements. Despite this legal technicality, the ethical concerns remain, as the integrity of the hiring process is seemingly influenced by financial contributions and political favoritism. Like County Council Lamore, Dr. Moo's hiring came with a substantial severance package, including a hefty financial safety net as Dr. Moo transitioned into his new role. Some have argued that this severance package is excessive and unnecessary, especially given Dr. Moo's initial lack of required educational requirements and qualifications for the position. The need for additional medical training funded by taxpayer dollars has only exacerbated concerns. The board majority's decision to approve such a package, in light of Dr. Moo's donations and the hiring process irregularities, has highlighted the ongoing issues of cronyism and financial mismanagement within the Shasta County's leadership. When confronted with the question as to why the board chose to go against the selection committee with their hire, Patrick Jones had this to say. And then, you know, with as far as the um, groups that have met, um, and I was involved in most of those um, as well, all of that 
is meaningless. It's ultimately up to this board. Now, so you're saying that the panel, the interview panels were meaningless. Is that what you just no, said? No, it's the ultimate authority of this governing body to make the decision, not who's on that, not who was appointed to be on those panels. And I, and I think for transparency purposes in Shasta County in 2023, it's important that that information be uh, given to the public. Yeah, I, I think it's irrelevant. Then there is the appointment of John Knight to the Mosquito Vector Board. Knight, known for his founding of Mountaintop Media, which regularly espouses far-right views and conspiracy theories. Where I was addressing people's concerns about what's going to happen this Wednesday, um, specifically at 2.22, uh, where there's these uh, 18 gigahertz pulsed frequencies that's going to uh, release the payload of this lipid nanoparticle technology, specifically the Marburg virus, which is a hemorrhagic fever. The reality is they don't have to take control of your phone or your computer and use those as antennas to activate. The 5G technology um, can zap you through your house. He was ultimately chosen for the position despite widespread criticism and opposition from community members and public health advocates. His controversial beliefs, including skepticism towards established scientific practices and vector control, have raised alarms about the potential impact of his appointment on the effectiveness and credibility of the board's work. The manipulation of appointments extends beyond these cases, reflecting a broader pattern of retaliatory politics. Judith Menor was denied reappointment to the Public Health Advisory Board following her involvement in the Recall Kevin Cry campaign. The Judith Menor person, I've had probably four interactions uh, with, none of them positive, all filled with lies. And um, so it's really simple for me. Like that's the, I can remember the last time I uh, spoke, it, I was walking down the flight of stairs in the parking garage. Her and her husband were there holding recall signs. And I said, I hope you guys have a great day. And she says, you've cost us millions and millions of dollars. And so, I mean, that was the last time. And I just walked away. So I won't be supporting her. Yet another example of the use of board appointments to punish political opponents. And most recently, the denial of Nathaniel Pickney to the Elections Commission. Cry abruptly changed his stance despite his earlier public support for anyone a supervisor would choose for the commission. You know, I, I, would, I would encourage you to at least take applications for that position because I would support whoever you want to bring forward because that is your person. Cry also stated to Shasta Scout one day before the vote, Quote, I refuse to take away the voice of a supervisor. However, the very next day, Cry reversed his position, a move that did not surprise Supervisor Tim Garman. What I care about is the individual correspondence I've had with this individual. And there is nothing about it at all that conveys to me good character. I will be voting no. Supervisor Garman. <laughs> Please don't interrupt. We're going to work. Supervisor Garman. Thank you, Chairman Cry. I didn't figure you would vote yes on this, even though you said multiple times, including the text the other day. I, I know you better than that. And I know you, you're a well-known liar. And so you didn't surprise me. Tim Garman's primary reasoning for nominating Pinckney for the position is so that he could protect the privacy of voters who signed Kevin Cry's recall petition last year, citing fears that Cry may exact political vengeance against those who signed his recall. We, it's not a secret that he want, has wanted to see those, see those signatures. We have a new ROV who's in place, who I don't know if he understands the law with that, but if those signatures are shown to Supervisor Cry, you could face charges from the Attorney General. So I don't know if you guys had some deal in place or whatever. I hope that's not the case. But that is my concern and part of my worry. And because of that, I want somebody up there who can at least keep an eye on things. Because if I find out later that one of our county employees gets fired or loses their position, and they end up saying, well, yeah, I, I signed that petition, I'm going to be pushing for an investigation into that. Cry, without skipping a beat, makes this statement. Uh, the Election Commission, as well as Supervisor Jones, wanted me to look at these uh, super, uh, the uh, signatures so many times. And I said, I could care less. I just don't care. And that has been my stance. So Supervisor Garman, I challenge and dare you to find any shred of evidence or person I've spoken to about that. Which makes it all the more ironic that text messages were then leaked that proves that Cry, at the very least, once was interested in procuring them. 
Tim Garman has been a recent target of crime, using the power of the board chair to force discussions of supervisor spending in their final year. So I would just make a motion that we um, <clears throat> look at um, our policy about um, money being spent by uh, outgoing supervisors and um, just... So you want to go back over and do what? So uh, you're not... There's, uh, yeah, so there, there's, there, there's two things. We have um, supervisors that are uh, leaving office or looking to spend an exorbitant amount of money for, I believe, no purpose. So I want to visit a policy. What do you mean? People are, what do you mean, spending an exorbitant amount of money for no purpose? What do you mean? Well, what I'm saying is that Supervisor Garman wants to go on a trip at the end of his, at the end of his ten, uh, stint here. You, you I spend money all the time, but I don't re but, reimburse. But okay. what's it got to do with the board? I don't. Well, it has to do with the board because the board represents the taxpayers, and taxpayers don't need to pay three or four thousand dollars for a no. trip. That okay. is nothing more than a networking and a glorified opportunity to go do something fun. In the following meeting, Cry removed Garmin from three boards that he was a part of and replaced him with Supervisor Kalstrom. The assertion that Garmin is wasting government funds for personal gain is a curious one, as Kevin Cry famously visited Mike Lindell with county funds in March of 2023 a move which he now claims was a trap. The Lindell trip, when I went to staff and said, hey, I can pay for this, they said, no, 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 no. You need to have the county pay for this because this is county business. Okay, so I'm, I stepped into traps. I found this interesting as Cry is alleging that Garmin is looking for a networking opportunity and to do something fun when Cry spent county funds to meet with nationally known controversial figure Mike Lindell from whom which he's gained significant exposure during his recall campaign. Garmin had this to say about his work on the board. I already have my reservations already made from the county for the RCRC event. I will be attending that. I have a right to do the county business till the last day of my work that the people elected me to do, and I plan on doing that all the way through the end of my term. And if it means going out of town for county business, it means going out of town for county business. I will do what I can for this county today and all the way through December 31st, when my term ends. And if you guys try to stop me, I will ask for an injunction. I will pursue, and I already told CEO Rick at this, I will pursue this. You cannot stop me from doing the work of the people. Lastly, I'd like to mention that Tim Garman has nominated me to the Elections Commission. I have a great interest in election integrity and wish to ensure balance on that commission. I have been very outspoken about this board's agenda outside of this newscast, but I do believe that I represent a significant portion of our community in Shasta County. I believe it's important for all of the community's interests to be represented, and that diversity of thought is crucial for a thriving democracy. The vote for the appointment will happen on July 23rd, 2024. I'll leave you with a clip of District 3 Supervisor Mary Rickard at the July 2nd, 2024 board meeting, stating why it's important to accept an appointment on the commission for balance. I'm also a conservative Christian woman, uh, and I've prayed about this issue. Believe it or not, I pray every day. I pray every time I walk in this back door into the board meetings. I truly do. Um, but I also know that this is a bipartisan position, that in Shasta County, as an elected official, as a supervisor, as a commissioner on this elections committee, it's all bipartisan. And I firmly believe that we need to... Um, to, to have balance. And that's the breakdown. <laughs> <laughs>